Uh, quick heads up, friends. You are not used to hearing expletives and sailors' curses come from my mouth, but in today's episode, you just might. In fact, you will. So if you've got little ones, cover up their ears and get ready to go forward. <laughs> Yes, you can reinvent yourself. It's what? Maybe a Thursday? It's late afternoon. Your week kind of sucked or work was stressful, insanely boring, whatever is usual. If it wasn't work, it was school. We're spinning around at home all week, getting shitloads of nothing done, even though everything seemed important at the time. At any rate, you're at a stopping point. A hold your horses moment where the rider pulls back on the reins. This is what we're talking about in today's episode of Flow Dreaming, episode 642. Yes, you can reinvent yourself. It's a show where we talk about the power of your mind to change your world around you, to literally affect the fabric of your reality. We talk about this feeling of hope and joy and relief. And that is what being aware of your flow does. It gives you a feeling of power again in your lives. I'm Summer McStravick, and welcome to another episode of Flow Dreaming. All right, friends. So uh, today's episode of Flow Dreaming is going to be a little bit different than you're used to. If you've been listening to the last couple episodes, you realize that I am in a shifting month, a pivoting month, a month where I'm putting out a whole new program called Flow On and Flow On All Access. So my hands are very, very full, but I still want to keep giving you a good show, a good episode, a podcast that will make you think Uh, progress you, change the way you feel, remind you of your true power, your intuitive power, your manifestational power, your power to direct your life and not just be fumbling along like a leaf blowing in the wind. So what I decided to do was, well, remember my books. I talked about them, I don't know, half a dozen, a dozen episodes ago. I wrote two books at the beginning of last year. And both of them are still searching for a home, frankly, because I sort of dropped the ball. (laughs) I did. I admit it. And they're here, and I think they need to still be shared, and they will be shared in book form. But I wanted to read to you a couple of episodes, actually, a couple of, or not episodes, chapters, vignettes, stories, and these are ones that I felt were too long to really go into an email or, you know, an email newsletter, but they're perfect as a kind of audio story. So that being said, I'm going to take you into one of them. The one that's called, like I said at the beginning, yes, you can reinvent yourself. So where were we? It was a Thursday. It was late afternoon. You had a sucky week. And um, you're having that hold your horses moment where the rider pulls back on the reins and you've just stopped and you are thinking. And you're facing your computer or your phone or your TV and you're wondering what's next for you in your life. If this is all there is, and you toy with the idea that you have depression. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But you do know that what's in front of you for the next five years or 10 years, it's, it's untenable. I just can't do this anymore, you realize. So how do you reinvent yourself? I mean, can you even? You Google it. All the articles recommend that you take deep breaths, explore new hobbies. (sighs) What bullshit. You feel incredibly underwhelmed. Me? Well, I just spent the day writing terribly boring emails. It's my least favorite job, and I try to make them as interesting as possible, but the truth is I have to do it to keep the wheels of my company running. Yet when I look at the hours that I've lost to it, I feel like what a shameful waste of life, another Thursday lost in time. I know you know the feeling of doing the same things you've been doing for years and not being sure about their value. And worse, 
We hate that we got here in the first place. I need to reinvent myself. How? How? I look back at all of my past reinventions, and they all happened without awareness. I was doing one thing, then slowly began doing another, and then that other thing became my main thing. It was organic, and I evolved. Why isn't that happening now? Why do I feel like I'm clawing onto the present even as I'm wishing it away? It's because I'm afraid. This time, I have bills to pay. I've got kids to support. I have less energy. My body is sagging and getting tireder earlier. And the thought that I have time or ability to pivot seems much harder to believe. My life doesn't feel rolled out in front of me like some long, deep pile Persian carpet. It feels like a narrow gray sidewalk choked with old gum. I need to reinvent myself. How? How? First, I take that stupidly long, deep breath, and then I recognize that I am different. I'm older. I have more reasons why I can't be newly successful, piled up in the deep, dark corners of my mind. I've built up barriers to change that hold me locked into a rigid, walled garden of what I can be and how much money I need to earn and how long it'll take me to do anything else, etc., and so on. And those walls may very well be absolute bullshit, too. But for the moment, I'm believing them. Until I stop. Stopping means I exhale. I give myself the time to evolve again. Slowly. Like before. I still have the same pressures, the same responsibilities. I have the same fears that what I make or become won't happen fast enough, be financially supportive enough, or be in any way as good as what I had before. But then I see that what's really happened over time isn't about any of that. It's about trust. Somewhere along the way, my trust broke. The trust that I could reinvent myself successfully. There. Stop. Feel it for a second. What if you had utter, total, deep, solid trust, a knowing that reinventing yourself will be wildly, spectacularly, Successful. Uh Uh-huh. You do it in a hot second. So now I see the key. What I'm missing. I no longer have that trust that I used to. Back when I just let myself shift and evolve without even really thinking it through. But now every shift is calculated against my potential losses. You want to know how to reinvent yourself? Get right back to that old, original feeling. Reinventing yourself will be wildly, spectacularly successful. Not might be, not has to be, just will be. If you can't feel that, then you are totally, 100% committed to staying where you are instead. Nobody takes any leaps if they can't feel themselves successfully on the other side of the chasm. And just because you can't see that chasm doesn't mean it's not there. Nobody put an expiry date on your life and said, you can't have any success after this. No more pivots for you. Time's up. Nobody said that but you. And you're limited, small-minded fearful thinking. So deep breath. You want to reinvent yourself? Here's how. Make time for it. Carve it out at night or in the early morning. Cancel all the silly time-sucking things you have in your life and you know what they are. Tell everyone you know that you have a new hobby and it's non-negotiable. Don't give yourself a hard deadline. That's the kiss of death. Your deadline is whenever the pie is baked. It's an 
unknowable right now. Just get the sucker in the oven. Stop thinking that the reinvented you has to be more successful and bigger and better in every way. Maybe the new reinvented you is shy and searching and lovely in your sweet naivete. Be okay with that. And last, don't fear it. Don't fear him or her, them. They're not losing anything. They're gaining You give them time and space to emerge, and they give you your new breath. Stop fearing that you'll lose your income or your family, or that you don't have the time or the space for this. Start reminding yourself that you've done this before, and it was easy last time. It just happened last time. You don't need this buildup of fear around it. This fear, it's a new thing, and it's a lie. Because you can pivot right now. Commit, make the time, and do it. Alrighty, friends, what'd you guys think of that? That is the opening story or essay of the first of the two books. And it's meant to encourage you and remind you that you're flexible, you're safe, you can trust, that the expectation inside yourself is my next iteration of myself can be, will be, could easily be even more successful than the last. It's to help you tear down that wall of fear that says, how can I change direction now? And I know because I was giving you a kind of personal story. I've been through this. I've been through this. And I remind myself, oh, yeah. There is no clinging to that old person, that old you, those old circumstances, the old marriage, the old relationship, the old job, the old success, the old failure even. The new person, the person that you're constantly emerging into is totally, totally up to you. It's not up to anybody else. There is not a single other person in this world that it's up to. It's all yours. You have all that power. And having all that power is precisely what life and flow wants you to have and wants you to feel from the first breath you take as a tiny baby to the very last one. There is no decline unless you let it be in your head, in your heart, in your flow. That's why I'm such a adamant jerk sometimes about get in your flow, do your flow dreaming. Get into that space, get into that head space, be in that place where you're in the forefront, where you're saying, this is how I want my life to feel. And I know it's so easy to drop back into the headspace of, but I can't because, because of the, the world or the virus or my job or my family. And I can't because you can, and you can, and you can, and you can. That's how, that's how you feel. That's what life is here. Remember, life is the dough that you are massaging under your fingertips. It's responding to you. You are not responding to it. Well, to some degree, I guess you are responding to it. And that's how you know to change course. Need it more heavily. Need like K-N-E-A-D, right? (laughs) Need it more gently. Oh, it's done. And this is where you stepping out and saying, I'm a creator, I'm a manifester. I put down the vision for me. If I want to change, if I want to pivot, if I want to reinvent myself at the ripe old age of 24 or 49 or 62, I can and I will. And it's only that old buildup of crud in my head that says, nah, time's up. That was me who put it there. You who put it there. And I know this because when you start 
to work with energy, when you start to work with your mind, your mindset, your emotional self, you start to rehabilitate it in many ways, you know, get rid of all the junk and the crud that's collected in there from a lifetime of living and other people's crummy ways of doing things that you took in. When all of that starts to shed, you find yourself standing again in that bright, sunny place. I know you felt it at one point in your life where you think, what do I want to be? What do I want to be? And that's always an option for you. Always, always, always. So ask yourself now, what do I want to be? And then go in and flow for it and feel it. I am this now. I am that now. I am, I am, I am. And don't get hung up in that, well, how do I get there? And what do I do? And is it too late? And blah, blah, blah. Nope. I am, I am, I am. It always starts with something and somewhere. And as long as that buildup is in front of you, preventing you from getting to that starting point, you're right. It won't start and it won't happen. I am a best-selling fiction writer. I am the top new realtor in my county. I am a teacher for children with special needs. I am going into politics. I was just elected. I am pivoting my career out of one area and into the next without losing a thing. Pure growth in it. I am, right? I am. I am what? I am happily in love. I found someone, something real and right and lasting. I am. I am a mother having a baby. I am. I am. I'm going to leave you with that. I am. And before I go, a recommendation. If you really want to step into that powerful manifestational being that you are, great playlist, uh, great playlist, playlist. Hey, maybe I ought to make a new word. Great playlist, confident. It's at the Flow Dreaming Shop or in the mobile app. Get it, confident. Reminds you of that deep inner power, that well spring of power that's always in you. Everyone has it. Everyone can tap in. It's like we're all settlers on top of the same rich oil bed in Texas. Tap in. The other thing is flow on. Flow on. Keep calm and flow on. That is my moniker. It is happening. It's enrolling. And uh, I have a little note here I recorded to put on the end of this show. I hope you listen to it. And I hope I can greet you really soon. Okay, my love to you all. Happy flow dreaming. Stay in flow. Do your flow dreaming. And I'll see you all again for the next episode of Flow Dreaming. My friends, Flow On is a brand new membership. And its goal is to keep you in flow, in alignment, and in a state of beautiful growth and emergence. Emergence into the next you. Sometimes this is going to mean some healing or renewing your energy from depression or burnout. Or maybe you're going to be pushing into new areas of growth and rampant success. Well, Flow On is your monthly spiritual backpack. It's a brand new program. I haven't done anything like it since, well, it's been so many years when I used to have a Flow Dream of the Month Club. Think of this as its new uh 21st century iteration. And Flow On has everything that you need. It's a monthly masterclass, a monthly flow dream, even some live interaction. And best of all, you can come and go as you please. There's no long-term commitments. So please check it out at flowdreaming.com. If you're lucky enough and it's enrolling, do grab a spot. It will not be open and available at all times all year. But if it's open please jump in. I know you won't be disappointed. And I look forward to traveling with you on this beautiful journey of flow and giving you so many tools, all the tools that I've ever created.